Welcome to this issue of our midweek check-in for Wednesday, the 19th of May. The emergency measures that have locked us down for the past several weeks were to come to an end tomorrow, the 20th, but there is every indication that they will continue on for a while longer. There is a news conference set for later today and we'll get more details then. But case numbers are continuing to drop, but hospitalizations are still of a number that makes it critical that we continue to work together to bring this third wave to an end. With a long weekend coming up, I know the temptation to get away is a strong one, but let's get this over and done with. If you haven't received your vaccine yet, by next week it is hoped that all age groups will be open. We are now down to 30-year-olds, so don't wait. As we can see all around us, the race is to get the vaccines ahead of more transmissions and variants. The reality for us here at the Cathedral is that we remain closed to any in-person in services and any meetings. But we're still available as the office is staffed. The porch entry to the Diocesan Center office is open 8.30 to 2. And you will find services of morning prayer Monday through Saturday online on our Cathedral Church's Facebook and YouTube pages along with our Sunday service at 11 a.m. and this midweek check-in. Also available is an online meditation gathering that takes place Thursdays at 6.30 via Zoom. To connect there, send an email to prayasyoucan3, the number three, at gmail.com. This past Saturday, we held our last Sunday School Zoom session but every week we'll be posting teaching materials and craft ideas to go along with the Sunday lections on the cathedral's website under the information tab. This coming Sunday is Pentecost, the birthday of the church, the day we usually all gather here dressed in red. You'll find some posters online to color to, dec to decorate your home or place in the front window of your home to celebrate. Speaking of our website, Sarah Underwood, our office administrator, is working with the Communications Committee of the Cathedral to make updates on our website, so do check it out now and again. The Cathedral's Cornerstone newsletter, the Pentecost Trinity edition, is in the development stages. If you have any information you would like to share with the wider public, do pass it along to Sarah via email at cathedralchurch at eastlink.ca. I will pass along to you as well a campaign of the National Church called Say Yes for Kids. In partnership with, with our Diocesan Environmental Network, they are encouraging people and parishes as much as you can during this lockdown to get involved taking on a cleanup campaign. Choose a day between May 23rd and June 13th to take part in a family-friendly litter cleanup initiative. And you can find out more information about this campaign by visiting www.anglicanfoundation.org forward slash kids. In a poem, song, and prayer today, I turn my attention to the situation in the Middle East where efforts are ongoing to bring a ceasefire and meaningful negotiations for peace. This is a land that has known more periods of unrest than peace, and yet it is considered holy by many religions. This past Sunday, we here in the Anglican Church of Canada observed Jerusalem Sunday, a day of prayer for the Diocese of Jerusalem and the peoples and parishes there. So I came upon a poem written by Dr. Salaba Sarsa, who was born and raised in Jerusalem and is now a professor of political science and associate vice president of global initiatives at Monmouth University in New Jersey. From the website Warscapes, it is noted that Dr. Sarsar is author and editor of several works on the Middle East as well as two books of poetry. The first, titled Crosswinds, includes impressions as a teenager experiencing Jerusalem under Jordanian and Israeli rule and maturing in a land of, quote, between war and peace. The second book, titled Seven Gates of Jerusalem, is a bilingual English-Arabic edition 
that weaves individual lives with the historical, the tangible, and the unseen. His poems address overcoming anxiety and the need for deliverance. This particular poem is titled, Awaiting the Return. And it is the title itself that gives meaning to what at first seems a simple inventory of items in a home. The items and objects that decorate and find place on tables and counters. And as we learn in the closing lines, the home described has been left no doubt in great haste due to perhaps bombings or neighborhood unrest that has made home too dangerous to stay in. So here's his poem titled, Awaiting the Return. Bread, three loaves, one sliced, the other two whole. Chairs and a wooden bench with five rosy cushions, enough seating for 10. Dates and raisins in a plastic bag. English breakfast tea in tin, loose leaf. Four photos of grown-ups and children posing on the refrigerator door. Gecko, whitish, crossing the window screen on the outside, oblivious to those waging war. Hydrangea blossoms, pinkish, bluish on the windowsill. Incense burnt on charcoal in the middle of an aluminum sheet on the countertop. Jasmine floating in a clear, deep dish kettle full of water on the stove. Last supper with a deformed Judas hanging on the wall. Marmalade in a jar with a silver spoon on the lid. Notepad, empty, attached by a string tied to a nail next to a pilaf Arabic calendar. Olives, black, intermingled with green. Butter biscuits on a flat plate with red flowers quilt with embroidered crosses on the sofa arm to the left of the dining table, radio cassette player with the cassette door open, squares of white goat cheese, teacups, one per sitting, made of fine china, utensils dangling from an accessory rack, vases and glasses ornate on exhibit in a curio cabinet, Windows, all glass, with colorful curtains pulled halfway. Xerox copies of the Lord's Prayer in English and French on a chair. Yellow candle, unlit in front of a half-burned icon. Olive oil and thyme in separate small white plates. A dining room waiting a family's return. A house looking forward to becoming a home again. The poem by Dr. Salabar Sasa, Awaiting the Return. And what of a song for today? I came across one by Michael Franti called Hey World, Don't Give Up, worth checking out. But in terms of recognition, I point you towards John Lennon. The author, along with Paul McCartney, when together as the Beatles, they changed the face and sound of the music world. Both of these songs, though, come from the pen of John Lennon after the breakup of the Beatles. The first one, titled Give Peace a Chance, set against the backdrop of the Vietnam War, this was Lennon's first solo single and was performed by John Lennon and Yoko Ono during their honeymoon bed-in at the Queen Elizabeth Hotel, July of 1969, in Montreal. From the Wikipedia website on the song, it notes, the song quickly became the anthem of anti-Vietnam War and counterculture movements and was sung by half a million demonstrators in Washington, D.C. on Vietnam Moratorium Day, November 15, 1969. It was led by Pete Seeger, who interspersed phrases like, are you listening, Nixon? And are you listening, Agnew? Between the chorus of protesters singing, all we are saying is give peace a chance. Now the lyrics to that song aren't terribly deep. It's more chant than lyrical masterpiece. 
But two years later in 1971, John Lennon would release another song, an album of the same name called Imagine. And this song would become the best-selling song of his solo career. The lyrics of the song call upon listeners to imagine a world at peace where all barriers and divisions are broken down and the whole human family recognizes that it is our common humanity beyond race, nationality, religion, and possessions that truly matters. The Wikipedia summary notes, Imagine is one of the 100 most performed songs of the 20th century. In 1999, it was ranked number 30 on the list of the 365 songs of the century. It earned a Grammy Hall of Fame award and was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's 500 songs that shaped rock and roll. A 2002 UK survey conducted by the Guinness World Records British hit singles named it the second best single of all time. Rolling Stone ranked it number three in its list of 500 greatest songs of all time. And since 2005, event organizers have played the song just before the New Year's ball drops in Times Square in New York City. By 2013, Imagine had sold 1.64 million copies in the UK. More than 200 artists have performed or covered the song, including artists like Madonna, Stevie Wonder, Joan Baez, Lady Gaga, Elton John, Diana Ross. In March of 2020, in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, the actress Gail Gatto posted an informal but star-studded cover version of Imagine on Instagram. So, check out John Lennon's Give Peace a Chance and Imagine. As a closing prayer, here is one by Reinhold Niebuhr. Carl Paul Reinhold Niebuhr was born in 1892 in Missouri to parents who were German immigrants. Niebuhr was an American theologian, ethicist, commentator on politics and public affairs, and was professor at Union Theological Seminary for more than 30 years. Described as a public theologian, he wrote and spoke frequently about the intersection of religion, politics, and public policy. Among his many writings, his most influential books include Moral Man and Immoral Society and The Nature and Destiny of Man. You will recognize the opening lines of this prayer, which have come to be known as the Serenity Prayer and has been adopted by the AA movement as a pattern for life. So here, a prayer by Reinhold Niebuhr that he titled, A Prayer for Peace and Serenity. Let us pray. O oh God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. Keep in touch, stay safe, and keep the faith until we meet again.